Uh, get your Bibles out tonight. This message I'm a minister tonight. Uh, amen. You y'all y'all did so good, son. I'm so you can stay for a minute, son. Thank you, Joe. I mean, y'all did good. I appreciate y'all. Amen. I really, really appreciate these young men. Amen. I, I raised them up myself, taught them myself. I taught them how to play myself. Because I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want whoremongers on the instruments. You know, if you've ever been in church, them, them, them instrumentalists, they look like they came fresh out of the nightclub in the church playing, scoping the women and stuff and don't live right. And because they got a gift, the pastor got to wrestle with them to get them to come, pay them. To, they go from church to church, no roots, no unstable. And I said, I'd rather just have no music. So I said one day, I told my sons, I said, well, I'm tired of dealing with this cat that's unstable. I said, I'm, we went, I went to the pawn shop, bought some keyboards, bought them, them a bass, bought my sons some drums. I said, let's work. And, and within one day, we learned to play two songs. One of them was, that was one of the first songs we learned, the last one y'all heard, which is why it's such my favorite song. And in two days, we learned to play. And we never looked back, and that was over, what, five years ago, six years, ten years? I don't know how many years that's been. And uh, he's actually a sort of a prodigy in music, so he's awesome, my, 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 my oldest son is. So um, you got to invest in their gifts. When you see gifts, invest, amen. Don't wait, for, don't wait for nobody to invest in your child. Invest in your own child. When you see a gift, if they, if they have artistic gifts, invest in it. Don't expect anybody to invest in your child. You invest in it. If they can write, invest in them. Amen. But then we started uh, playing and we've uh, never looked back. We're not the best, but I enjoy it. I get it. I, it. It works for me. I can get in the presence of God. It works for me. Amen. And we have people at our church. We have a praise team, people that can sing. But I, I like to do it because I like it. I enjoy it. I ain't moving out of the way till I feel the anointing on that same level. Then I'll move. When somebody come do that, I'll, I'll move. But I like the presence of God so much. And I think it's important for pastors to show their people how to worship. You know, I told y'all one of the one of the things I've hated the most was men around men and God. They don't worship. They don't. You know, it's all the women are worshiping, and the brothers are just standing there like, you know, almost as if they don't know should they or is it cool or is it all right? You know, and uh, I believe in worshiping. Amen. I, I believe in being a man's man, though. But I believe in worshiping. In the presence of God, I come. I get real childish. Amen. All right, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, son. Amen. Appreciate y'all. All right, this message tonight, Amen. Is 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 is. I don't know how rough it's gonna be, but it'll be a good message. Turn me down just a just a hair, son. Turn me down just a hair. Amen. Um, it's it's th th this is a message. If you if you know me and you've been on YouTube, you see I got a lot of messages. And uh, part of my problem is trying to is is preaching new messages, but afraid that people are not draining the nuggets from the other messages. In other words, to keep putting out new stuff, not sure if people are actually getting full um, maximum yield out of what you've already put out. But to try to unhook people from just looking for the new, something new versus really understanding that you got to drain a message. It's not enough just to listen to it one time because if you listen to anointed teaching, you could hear that message again and it'll speak to you again and it'll speak to you again and it'll speak to you again and you might be going through something that message will speak to you about that and you'll be like, how is it that it's speaking to me now? That was a message was a year ago. It spoke to me then, but it speaks to me now. One of the greatest ways to rekindle your love for God is go back and listen to the word you was listening to when you first got on fire for God. When you first begin to come to the Lord, those messages will rekindle. Those songs, those songs, the worship songs you listened to when you first got on fire, they will rekindle. A lot of times I go back because it's hard to, this new stuff, they ain't got nothing on, they ain't got no anointing on it. So I go back and listen to Fred Hammond. I go back to the, the old, the old, the inner court, the old stuff. I'm talking about the old. We go back and listen there. It rekindles that fire, you know, that we had uh, for the Lord because this new stuff is corporately made and, um, the people that are actually making the music are, uh, are are not necessarily saved. The music itself is not necessarily saved. You can say you can say Jesus on top of on top of bad music. So just because you're saying Jesus don't mean the music gonna be good. It just means you took a worldly song or something with a worldly spirit on it and then said Jesus on top of it. But it, the, the spirit of the music, the spirit still came through the music. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why when you listen to some music, even if it's gospel music, you know the spirit of it because what does it put you in mind to do? Does it make you want to worship or does it make you want to go to the club? You got to realize a lot of this music now, gospel music, it's club music because they have to keep up with the sound to sell records. In other words, they got to keep up with the worldly culture to sell records because they're no longer making records for us, the church. They're making records for the world. That's why every time they get started out, they talk about how Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Then they get a little worldly notoriety. Then they say, I'm no longer a Christian rapper. I'm a rap a Christian that raps. And I don't know. See, they change all that. Now they want the world's fame and fortune. And they leave the people who built their foundation. And they go to the world and embrace them. And then the world spits them out, chews them up, spits them out. And they come back to us. And we prodigal son them. Come on back in. <laughs> And, uh, and so you have to understand that just because it's on the radio or just because it says Christian, you have to discern everything coming in your spirit, everything you hear. Yeah. It's not enough just to assume because a person, even the ones that you felt was stable and strong, look what Kirk just came out and did. Yeah. Kirk had no reason to go and, and embrace the LGBT. He had no reason to do that. But he did it anyway because to sell more records, to be more relevant. And so you got to realize that even though I, I always thought Kurt was strong, I, I, I mean, I liked him because always, he always had Jesus, Jesus in his music. But then when he turned around and, and, and but this is what's happening to all of them, because as darkness is increased, you're going to find people folding under the pressure to folding under the pressure to 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 to, to continue to to make money and to stay relevant or to begin to be persecuted. And most Christians. That's what's happened to many of our mega pastors. Many of you all want to know the word. You, you go online and find out all this stuff going on in the world. But then you, if you look at the church, uh, uh, Christian TV, you would think nothing is happening bad at all because they're not preaching nothing. No issues, no, no nothing going on. They don't talk about no politics. They don't talk about CERN or nothing. This, this is going on with life. Like we just, like we just ain't nothing happened. And so uh, part, of that, part of that problem um, causes us to think that everything's okay but then most of us have been studying and we research and we seeking and we realizing it's not okay and and and, and you think something wrong with you because why come ain't nobody saying it why is nobody talking about this stuff are you hearing what i'm saying but a lot of that is because these pastors have weighed they've made a decision that either i'm uh, in order for me to mention this i'm going to lose notoriety if i say this i'm gonna lose that group if i say this i'm gonna lose that group so what can i preach that goes down the middle that don't offend nobody well then that's why the messages are so weak and watered down because to truly preach the gospel you must offend 50 percent you must have 50 percent that's why i don't get excited when i don't care if people hate me and i don't get excited when there are too many people like me because you're going to offend 50. that's jesus's ministry. go study jesus ministry when he when he preached half of them embraced him the other ones wanting to bite him study it and they want to gnash teeth on him the half want to embrace him the other was trying to throw him off the cliff he said it ain't my time yet so you only gonna get 50 percent so any preacher that, that gets 100 percent got everybody like the bible says beware a uh, woe unto you when all men speak well of you because they speak well of the false prophets so when you see the world embracing folk trust me god is not embracing them because god is not going to share any glory with the world so therefore if the world is embracing them god's not embracing so all of that preachers of la and all of that uh, all of these pastors running in time magazine and want to do worldly things trust me god is not in it because god is not going to embrace what satan is embracing are you hearing what i'm saying to truly be men and women of God in this hour, you're going to have to understand persecution. It's part of it. Not, and it's not just going to be us preachers who's up preaching this real message. It's going to be y'all too. Because when you go on your job, they're going to add, they're going to force you to say what you believe. See, they're going to get, you're going to have uh, homosexual supervisors and stuff, and they're going to force you to, to, accept, to say what you believe. And if you don't believe what they say, they're going to, they're going to defy you and, and lay you off and, 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 and ostracize you because it's coming down to having to chew, you having to fight. Uh, you, you have to you have to pick a side now. It's no longer uh, neutral Christianity. Right. You must pick a side. Amen. Amen. All right. So even though I'm not really going to get into too much of that tonight. Uh, this message I'm going to teach now. It's a message that, that, that I've, I've said some stuff about it before, but I'm going to reiterate it because as I was saying, Lord, what what the preach tonight, the Lord can deal with me about uh, this. I, I start thinking about uh, Facebook and different Twitter and Instagram and and just seeing how self self involved the culture is everybody's involved with themselves and uh this selfie and this all about me and and uh and and that and and that should never be a part of the christian 
uh, Christian character because our character is a life of selflessness, sacrifice. Our life is to sacrifice. It is not to, uh, it, it's, it's to serve others better than we're served. But because we have this culture that is me-minded and everybody want to be famous and everybody want to be somebody and everybody want attention, then that is permeated into the church. And people are very confused because they only, they, because they only doing what they can get attention for. And God, usually when God's working on you, he puts you in obscure places where nobody knows you and nobody knows your name and nobody sees what you do. That's why the greatest time I had with the Lord was when I, I was in a ministry and, uh, and I was a, I've been a preacher when, I, when I, I got saved in the club. I didn't get saved at church. I heard God sitting in the club tell me, leave. And I, he, I walked out the door sober. I was drunk. I walked out the door sober. And I had one of them Paul the Apostle situations. That's why I stayed saved. That's why I question people who get these little weak conversions. And they, they you know, they shuck the preacher's hand, but they, they fall every week. No, you falling because you didn't get a real conversion. You get a real conversion. That knock you off the horse, blind you, and you get up, and all of a sudden your eyes are open. You ain't going back to what you was into. So that's how I got saved. But anyway, um, when, 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 when the Lord has saved me, um, when I came into the church, um, there was there was there was a there was a difference. There was a light that you had that we had. There was there was a there was a there was a light we had back then. You know, it was it was a, it was a tenacity you had to be saved. It wasn't like now, where we try to figure out how close can we go to the world. How, how what is what is what is what is uh, in bounds and what is out of bounds. We try to figure out what's the limit, what's the edge. People try to walk as close to the edge and jump on Jesus' side before he comes. You know. <laughs> playing games. That's what people do. That's the only reason people want to know prophecy. The only reason people want to know prophecy is to find out when is he coming? How long I got to sin? Tell me when the asteroid going to hit. Tell me when the Y2... Remember Y2K? Everybody was like that because they just want to know, is it really going to end? Soon they found out it wasn't going to end. At, at, at 12.59, at, 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 when the clock struck 101, they was turning it up. Two thousand zero zero party over oops. That's what they was doing. They was partying. Oh, I ain't gonna really end. All right, let's keep going. This September scared everybody to death. Something's coming this September. Now September over. We back to where we, because we only serve the Lord uh, because we're trying to escape penalty. We have not yet fell in love with Him. It's not yet a love relationship that I'm compelled to serve Him by love, not by fear. If you're only serving the Lord for fear, you'll, you will soon stop being afraid and you'll go ahead and do what you want to do. But when you fall in love with him, it's a love relationship. And I don't sin because I don't want to hurt him, not because I'm scared of him. Amen. Uh, okay. Amen. So what we, have, what we must do is we must understand that uh, we, 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 we have a, but anyway, what I was saying about this uh, selfish, this selfishness. This selfishness is uh, one of the greatest, uh, it's a sin actually to be selfish, but it's, it's, it's so, it's, it's, it's the spirit of the end time. The Bible says men will be lovers of themselves. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Lovers of themselves. I mean, it's just such a, uh, uh, it's just such a lack of concern for people, lack of concern for anybody. And so you see mothers on YouTube putting babies in, 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 in microwaves and, leaving babies on the door. I saw something where a dog found a baby in the alley somewhere, a newborn child with the umbilical cord hanging. The baby was alive. The dog picked up the baby and carried the baby with the dog. The mother, the paternal instincts kicked in. The dog had more instincts. The Bible says that in the last days, women will be without natural affection. Even a dog had a more affection than a person who had a child and just, come on now. You know, we're in a bad place when a dog knows to try to, the dog was trying to find a baby something to eat because the maternal instinct of a dog kicked in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Are y'all there? And that's, what, that's where we are. So because this selfish culture, this selfish culture is great for people trying to sell you something. This culture, we are at the height of consumerism. That's, watch Black Friday and see what happens. How did we go from this really, we should have never celebrated that, never. Yeah. We as a people should never celebrate that. That was when they loaned you out as slaves so that the masters could get their harvest in and they gave you, they loaned out their slaves for extra field help and sold their slaves at discount prices. 
That's what Black Friday is. See, everything, everything is everything. So you got to research it. But now we in the stores fighting over TVs and sl slamming folks over TVs and, you know, over TV. But that, but this whole, this whole thing is really pointing to our den, uh, denigration, degradation. We should protest it. I ain't giving you no dollars at all. On Black Friday, black people ain't spending a dime. And they don't want y'all to wake up because they know we are the greatest consumer block there is. Trillions of dollars come through the black community and we don't have, we don't hold on to none of it. One dollar, one dollar lasts one hour in the black community. It's gone. So they know, so, so, so they have figured out, the Bible says the fool and his money is soon departed. So they keep us foolish so we depart with our money. Everything they put us out there to buy, it, 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 it depreciates the minute we buy it. Everything we buy depreciates. Look at your son with that grill in his mouth. That grill cost him two, three thousand dollars, but when it hit his teeth, it ain't worth nothing. The he two hundred dollar George, but as soon as he put them on, they ain't worth nothing when he take them off. Everything we buy depreciates. Twenty inch rims that he paid four thousand for, but they ain't gonna be worth but about a thousand when he get done. The cars, the cars worth less than the the cars worth less than the wheels. They understand how to keep us in a consumer selfish selfish mode that we will continue to release our dollars and never expect any like i was saying like everyone in america this is true every black community has corner stores that's owned by arabs or some other ethnic group yeah. every beauty store is koreans the chinese selling you her This is a this is a conspiracy because it's everywhere. Yes, now, if it was in some cities, I'd say okay. But when we was in Chicago, you could. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Every store is owned by other ethnic groups, but they all in the hood. We they all making money off of us. So why would we want these people to wake up to their true power? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How in the world can some guy get on her and make a and 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 and, and eat a pie and 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 and, and raise and sell two point something million dollar worth of pies in a weekend based on a black man eating a pie acting like a woman? And they and they saw the buying power of the black community, and we don't know how powerful that is. That we could stop stuff, but see, notice those corner stores, they never sponsor the Little League, the football team. They never could put nothing in the community. They don't give nothing back to the community because we don't expect nothing. Amen. But you go to other communities where they let you come in and have a store, they, they, they are giving into that community. They sponsor that community. They doing stuff for that community, but they, they don't give us nothing, sell dope out the back. Say, man, impregnate our black women that work there. I know. I've lived around it a long time, and we don't say nothing about it, and we don't know there's a problem with that, and that's why, because we never demand nothing if you don't demand nothing, if you, ha you have not, because you, you ask not. But what would happen if we said we ain't spending no more money on a corner store? None of them. We'll take the drive. Let's take the ride. We ain't spending no more money. Then no, it won't. They'll be out there talking about what can we do for your community. They'll be what can can we invest in y'all schools? What can we do? Why? Because once they lose them dollars, they're gonna be trying to figure out how to get you back in that store. But we don't understand that. So this is the reason why no matter where you go, we're in the same place. Now, now there's another that I can go deeper with that, but I'm not gonna deal with that tonight. What I want to talk about is the selfish cultures. Why, is why we and even many of us are where we are. Because we don't understand that this is a self selfless. Now, part of what I'm going to talk about is called vampirism. <laughs> because I would guarantee you, this culture is too selfish for you not to be sucking the life out of somebody, or you got people that sucking the life out of you. And many of you all can't reach your potential because somebody's some some spiritual thing is draining you. Somebody, you have more weight on you than, than what Christ allows. And, and, and Satan has allowed this to happen in your life because he knows that because of our need to be needed or want to be wanted, we will keep unnecessary baggage and people that should have been kicked to the curb a long time ago. But because of our insatiable need or our low self-esteem, that we need somebody to praise us and to want us, that we will keep people around. And these are the very people many times that are stopping us from going to the place God wants us to go. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Come on, talk to me. 
And so this culture of vampirism, and I call it emotional vampirism, is narcissism, where people are so, uh, people now have no sense of getting up on their own. Their goal is to find somebody to leech, to latch, to connect with, to ride your life to success. Like, nice. like you might be a person that prays, and before you know it, because people don't pray no more, so they find folks that pray. Yeah. And they will find you to pray, and they will ride your, pray for me about this, pray for me about this, pray for me. Yeah. No, you pray for your, call you three in the morning. I just need you to pray. Touch and agree. Why? No, what do I get praying for you for? Can I get a prayer one time? Amen. Notice you never, they never pray for you, but they call right. for prayer all the time. Yeah. And you usually praying about the foolishness that they keep getting entangled in. The Bible says lay aside all the sins and the weights that so easily beset you. So the reason why they keep getting entangled because they don't lay aside the foolishness. Talk to me. And so many of you all see what I learned is there's about uh, there's about 10 percent of every church that does all the work. 10 percent. You ain't gonna get no more than that. Ten, that's why Jesus didn't need a lot of people because he knew ain't number 10 gonna work. So ain't no need in getting a whole lot of people. Why y'all think the 5,000 turn back? Because he said, I ain't, I ain't got, I ain't number these 12 going to work. So ain't no need to try to get a whole bunch of people. Now, the problem is, is because you have 10, you have 10 percent that's very passionate. And because they're very passionate, they are the ones that will do all the work. They'll get used and burnt out quick because they're doing it all. Say amen. amen. You will have a 90 percent who's really not very dedicated and committed, but they will use the 10 percent to supplement their life. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, some of you all, many of you all probably that have been listening to my message and follow me. You may be part of that 10 percent. Because you probably got people in your life that you're feeding, you people that leech or that 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 that, that live off of you. Are y'all there? Yes. And 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 one and one of the things that I've learned is is that you have to learn how to let folk go. Now this is going to be a message for you tonight. I'm telling you, to deliver you from people. Because one of the, my greatest lessons I've ever learned was to let folk go. I've mastered it. It's an art. I learned it. It's, it's an art to let folk go. People are shocked that I'm that skilled in it. I will let you go. I don't play no games in my church. Matter of fact, at my church, they will tell you, I don't open the doors of the church. It might be every three months, four months, five months, six months. People actually got to come. Pastor, can we join? Because I don't, even have, I, don't, I don't beg people to join. I wish, really, I told them we should build a fence in the front, make them climb and see if they really won't be saved. You really climb this 12-foot fence with two rock wilders, and then we'll see if you won't be saved. Because I'm tired of people playing with me. Don't be getting me invested in your life, and you ain't serious. Have us all laboring over you and praying over you and helping you, and you go right back with that Negro. I told you, leave him alone and playing with me. So, so, so. So we need to see if you won't be saved. Let's really see. You know, let's get making it, you know, that uh, survival. Let's go through survival, see if you won't be saved. <laughs> but this is, are y'all there? But that's how it is. That's, that's how I am. I mean, when, when, when it's time to let you go, I'll let you go. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a pastor. If you leave my church, I don't say nothing about you. I don't send no letters. I don't talk about you. I don't say your name. I don't, you ain't got to worry about me. Go on, curse folk. I don't, never, I don't understand why preachers do that. What you gotta curse folk and send letters on them and tell them they ain't no good man. I ain't got time to be doing that. That person left because they ain't supposed to be with me. Boom. That's why they left. They ain't supposed to be with me. See, I'm not rejected that I'm gonna be hurt that you leaving me. Look, bye. You ain't hurt because you ain't supposed to be. I mastered it. Me and my wife are masters at this. We've had to learn because if you don't, your blood pressure will be high. Right. you be having insomnia and can't sleep because cats will be wearing you out. Amen. Trying to, you trying to prove love to them. You got to learn to let folk go. I ain't never say, even people, you be in a relationship with somebody, keep talking about they want to leave. Man, look, man, you tell me, I listen to what people say. I learn, I tell you, listen to what people say. You keep talking about you going to leave me, dude, I'm going to make you leave then. I ain't going to sit here and wait on you to leave me. I believe what you say. I don't be playing games with folks. See, I, ain't gonna, I don't play games and make you do nothing. I, I ain't manipulative. I, if you want, go, go. And then usually people do that, and then they get offended that you didn't come out of them. You said you wanted to go. So I let you go. That kills the game plan. But that's this narcissist culture. Y'all there. 
narcissism, extreme selfishness, with a grandiose view of one's own talents and craving for admiration, self-centeredness arising from, listen, self-centeredness arising from failure to distinguish the self from external objects. In other words, their self, they, they can't discern anything outside of themselves. Either they're very young, immature, or they have a mental disorder. This has destroyed our culture. Narcissism. Self-centeredness. Where we sacrifice folks for our own benefit. I've been a part of churches where I've seen that in the leadership where they sacrifice the people. No matter how, no matter how the people feel, no matter what's going on, the people are only there to fulfill their games they play. The etymology of narcissism is a term, uh, is a Greek term coming from Narcissus. He was a handsome youth who fell in love with the nymph Echo. But when she spurned his advances, he was doomed to fall in love with his own reflection. He pined away his whole life obsessing about his image and eventually turned into a flower, the Narcissus. The myth of Narcissus, of Narcissus ha has given rise to the personality disorder known as Narcissism, which is characterized by vanity, conceit, egotism, and self-obsession. This is what reality show is. This reality culture of showing you constantly bunch of self get a bunch of self-centered people, put them on the show and watch them act the fool. Beautiful women put on the show acting a fool. All of them into themselves. All of them trying to be more glamorous than the next one. All of them trying to get the next man, trying to get her man. It's just it's it's and and and, and, and people will sit back and watch that and say, how have we fallen from 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 virtuous? Talk to me. From virtue, y'all want to talk. Y'all, 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 y'all want to talk. From virtuous of the '60s and '50s to this, are you hearing what I'm saying? To narcissistic, ego-driven, uh, materialistic. Talk to me. And you never see their children. That ought to tell you something right there. Where are your children? You got you out here too much. Where are your kids at? But this, but this narcissism is permeated in our culture, and it came into the church. It came into the church, and that's why the church is so full of celebrities. And now celebrities are qualified to teach you that ain't saved. Like Alana Van Zandt. She's, she's a voodoo priestess. Yeah, she's a Yorba priestess. That means she's an ancestor worship. We know ancestor worship is, dem is demon worship. Same thing they do in Africa. That's what she's into. Yes, yeah, she's fixing preachers' lives. Wow. Mm. Oprah, who ain't figured out who Christ is yet. <laughs> yeah, y'all follow because she's black and successful, but she ain't sure. She got all kind of new age teaching and all kind of stuff going on, mixing it all together, and her aim is at the church. Why you think she's behind all the preacher wives and preacher stuff? She's the one doing that. Why? She's trying to make such a, uh, uh, the church look so ugly that you don't, that's why people don't respect the church no more. But nobody asked the question because it's, you think it's entertainment, but it's programming us. Amen. It's programming us to disrespect the things of God, to disrespect church, to not even care about the house of God anymore. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And it has developed a selfish, person, a selfish personality to where anybody can come in and teach. I was watching a, 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 a conference where uh, uh, they brought in actors, sexy actors in a Christian conference that ain't never named the name of Christ, but they qualify somehow to teach folk because they had influence and celebrity. Talk to me. This is what's passing for spirituality, influence, not true Christian faithfulness to the Christ, to the, to the cross, to, 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 to be saved. But now if you have any type of influence or even wealth, wealth even now, you have to be wealthy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Gone are the days that poor folk it can be spiritual. Yes, sir. Say amen. Yes, sir. 
Because if you ain't got no, because if you poor and you and and, and you and, and then you can't be spiritual, obviously you can't afford spirituality. Because you shouldn't be poor if you spiritual. If you shouldn't be, you you won't be poor if you spiritual. This is what the prosperity gospel has done. It has made a consumerism culture in the church where people ain't doing them lying, getting in debt because they ain't really paying for most of the stuff they got. See, most of that prosperity gospel, I knew it, what I was trying to tell people, it's, gonna, it's a lie, it's a lie. You just don't know it's a lie. But 2008 proved that it was a lie. Because if God really gave y'all this prosperity, why y'all losing y'all houses? Look at all the houses that was boarded up. Was most of these, these church folk went out and got loans and, 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 and really couldn't afford it. But, but coming in shouting that God is doing this. Talk, y'all want to talk about this. But if God gave it to you, why the hood boarded up? It's boarded up because people couldn't afford it. They went out wanting to believe in prosperity and getting in debt. Amen. Debt is not prosperity. Amen. Debt ain't prosperity. Amen. If you got to go in debt for it, God didn't do that. Amen. Come on, I'm trying to help y'all. I've been teaching to live debt free for years. We own our house. Don't owe, we don't owe a dollar. Three cars are paid for. We don't owe a dollar. We don't finance nothing. Taught my son that, my daughter. My daughter went all the way through college and ain't in no debt. Amen. She great graduate in December and ain't got no debt. And I see people graduating from her college, 50000 in debt from her. You got to be crazy. That ain't no blessing. But see, we train like don't, even people in our ministry. No, you ain't, we don't believe in debt. Say man, We believe in weight. Say wait. See, don't run out there and get that car because they say you can get it. Go to uh, 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 get your taxes, your income tax money, and get you some for three, four thousand dollars at run. See that? See that? See? But then by the end of the year, now, 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 you might not be riding in the latest or the best. But them people over there are up at night trying to figure out how they're going to keep their full coverage and pay that $500 a month note. And you sleep because you paid for it. But say selfishness. That's what makes you go do stuff like that. Buy stuff you can't afford. Get, go into debt trying to keep up with folk for a selfish motive. Say, man, I know what I'm talking about. Clothes you can't afford. You don't need those shoes. They cost too much. Amen. Your walk is going to be the same in some half price. Because <laughs> we are a culture of consumerism. Come on, I'm trying to help y'all. Why come to a conference and don't get nothing practical? Man, is it all emotion? Should we just go emotion? No, we got to learn something. Amen. What is affecting your life? I guarantee you right now, the majority of y'all in debt. Deep debt. Some of y'all debt so deep, you just done thinking about it. Because you can't, the debt you got, you can't bankrupt. You would have bankrupted, but you can't bankrupt school debt. Some debt you can't get out of. Now you think God's going to be talking to you about something deep, or he's going to talk to you about what you worried about. What you really worried about. How to make these ends meet. How to stop living, barely making it. God's, God's in, he's interested in that. I'm telling you how we get in here. It's from a selfish culture that believe that has been trained we got to have everything. Yes. This is what's hurting marriages is that one, one person is a splurger. One person don't care nothing about no bills. Y'all know it. They don't care nothing about no bills. They don't care, but they don't care but if, the, if, if the shoes and the, and, the, and the light bill is the same price. Oh, well. We'll be in the dark. The other person goes and spend a lot. Of, they don't spend a lot on clothes, but they spend a lot on eating out. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. They spend sixty, seventy dollars at a restaurant. They ain't gonna buy no clothes, but they'll spend sixty, seventy dollars at a restaurant. The Bible says that God is their belly. Oh. You have to be careful. That if you're going to ever have anything with God, you got to learn that God is trying to bring you into order Amen. so that you can begin to learn a, his principles and stop living by spiritual lottery. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Say spiritual lottery. spiritual lottery. 
Spiritual lottery is what you're doing when you not making correct decisions and you go to hoping and the witching and the hoping and the witching and the hoping and the witching and the hoping and the witching, hoping you hit something and it comes to you instead of saying God is a God that's trying to cause me to work on principle. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say principle. principle. I, come on, can we talk or not talk? Go to James. James chapter 3. Come on, let's go. Can I teach you something? I'm trying to teach you something solid. I'm tired of church folks shouting, going home and living in mess. Come on, talk to me. Shouting, living in hell. Shouting, barely making it. Are y'all there? I'm not a prosperity preacher. I believe in you get wealth. You take your time. You build something. Say amen. You, you, you just spend a little, put a little away. Spend a little, put a little bit away. My two sons right here work. They work hard too. They work hard and we taught them to save. They done been all out of the country. They done been in other countries. But young, I, I wasn't nowhere when they, at their age, but they've been there because we told them, y'all going to learn to travel. Why? Because, and then we ain't paid for it. They paid for it. Why? Because I'm understanding, I'm, 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 I'm building, I'm building men, not just, not just grown physical bodies, but men that can handle wealth. Because see, if he can handle his own money, then he'll be able to handle uh, his, his, his home when he get a wife. Then he'll be able to handle his children. But if we're not training our sons, then they're going to be ill-equipped to even live with a woman, to deal with a woman. Say amen. amen. And when a man does not, are y'all ready? I, I feel myself going over here. I'm going, I'm going over into it. See, when a, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a man does not take his true role, he creates... Say creates. creates. He creates the kind of woman that he hates. See, as much as we all, as much as we say Jezebel, she's a dirty foe, but she's a great scapegoat for men who don't like responsibility. Because there would have been no Jezebel if there was no Ahab. The Bible says that when Jezebel got Naboth killed, she used the signature of the king. Because he was in the house crying about he couldn't get the vineyard. When a man doesn't step in his role, he pushes his woman. To begin to do things that's against her own function, her own purpose, her own nature. She don't want to rule you or lead you. But you, but, 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 but if you're going to settle for being her son, then she going to mother you. The maternal instincts kick in when a woman see a weakness, she looks at you as her son. When a woman sees a strong man, she looks at you as her father. Two different things. Y'all ain't, ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. See, 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 see really, when a, in, in the biblical marriage was, when you left your father as a woman, you went to a, the father, the man you married, he inspected that man. That man had to have a, have a house that he built himself. Your father went to his father and they both went to that boy's house and looked at it to make sure he did it right. Not that he just threw something together to get a woman. The father's inspected to make sure he got the house and the money and the means because he had to pay your daddy a dowry, which was your worth. And after he did that, he was approved to marry the daughter. But because, and because he, she went from a father, what was the father's role? Protector. Number one's protector. Number one's protector, security. Y'all there? What's number three? See if y'all know. That's, that's, that's the security. Love. It's love. Woman's number one need is love. A father's job is protector. He protects first. Then he secures. That's, that's provision. 
financial either way for vision. Then love. Though if those three things are missing, then she'll go try to find it. And if you never got it, you don't know the man, you don't know how the man in your life is supposed to be. So you settle for boys. Come on, talk to me. So this is the reason why we have, it's two, say twofold. The lack of masculinity in our homes has effeminate. Not, that's not the only reason that our sons have been effeminate. Because see, when you say effeminate, when you think we're talking about gay, and ain't always talking about gay. It's talking about, it's talking about soft, not able to deal with pressure or responsibility. See when, see, when I talk to sisters, I ain't got to ask you what's wrong with them. I know what's wrong. She's going to say the same thing everybody else say. Are y'all there? But as you saying that about the man you talking about, you doing that same thing to your son. He's going to be some woman's man. And that woman going to be mad at you. Are y'all there? So a man standing in his role has the ability, listen, listen, y'all. Oh, can, you, can I help y'all? When a man is standing in his role, he has his woman, listen, listen. His woman has something that most women don't know nothing about. They've never felt it their whole life. This is why it's so important for us to stop having all these women's conferences and build these brothers because you're not going to be fulfilled running these women. Run with them all you want to. You ain't going to be fulfilled. A man has an ability to, when he does what he's supposed to do to make you feel fulfilled. Because he does something, he gives you something that most women don't know nothing about. That's why they all out here talking, running mouth. They don't know what they're talking about because no, most women have never felt safe. Never. Never. That's what a man brings. Yes. In safety, she blossoms. Yes. In safety, she blossoms into, a, into that woman. But when, but when a woman is not safe, she has no, the environment is not conducive to growing. So instead of her blossoming, she turns inward. Y'all heard what I'm saying? And, which, and, and really what she does, she picks up the attitude, masculine attitude to survive. Talk to me. Y'all want this? Y'all want what I'm saying? Come on, now I said I was going over here. Now y'all want, I could go back here, but I'm, the Holy Ghost got me over here. If y'all want me to stay over here. So most of you all sisters have only been in survival mode. That's it. That is all it is. You're in relationships in survival mode. Uh -huh. That means you, because <laughs> you're not sure, you, first of all, you don't even know how he's supposed to be. And because most women that you're talking to don't know safety, they all saying the same thing. So they can't even tell you. Come on, talk to me. This is the reason why we should be building. We should be building our men. Because this is what men bring to the table. Are y'all there? Don't be trying to marry no woman if you ain't going to provide those three things. Don't even mess with her. Don't mess with her. That's why I teach that in my church. I teach brother. Don't even brother come to me. I'm ready to get married, Pastor. And, and, and I know they be not really wanting to come to me because they know how I, I am. I'm okay. Uh, let's let's. I don't be. I don't. I don't play with that because I understand you get ready to get a gym. You get. You get. You get ready to inherit the greatest responsibility that a man would ever have. There's no responsibility greater than a woman. She's so. It's the responsibility is so great. God gave her two coverings. That's how great it is. She's supposed to be covered. So a man getting a woman that does, is not ready for responsibility, it's going to be a bad situation. Yes, so when they come to me, I start to run, oh, Lord. 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 Go over, go over, go over to Genesis. I'm trying to stay, I was trying, but, I, you know, we will, we will. 
I'm still talking about selfishness. Because I, I want, let me, let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me show you something. Go to Genesis chapter 3. This is one of the greatest, I don't understand how we don't get these truths, but it's, it's because, and listen now, you, you, you have to factor in the evils of feminism. Amen. You got to factor that in. Because for some reason, you sisters had no reason to be against y'all men. Y'all men, y'all men was never over y'all. We never ruled y'all. The black woman was always on top. The master made sure she was on top. She was the one he was using to break the children and break the man. The woman was the one they was using in, 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 the Lynch, in Willie Lynch. They used her to break the man. So, why? so we was never over y'all like that. Every man had big mama. It was always the women run our home. Y'all know that. But the white woman had a problem with her man. And she came to the black woman and told y'all to stand with her in sisterhood. Y'all left the struggle <laughs> with us and ran with them. And now y'all into this sisterhood and y'all don't know why y'all on YouTube and men are hating on men and men are hating on women. And we can't seem to get together because as a y'all fought a war that wasn't even a war. Ain't no fight there. We needed our women. Y'all remember in, back in the day, Afros, Black Panthers, women is right there with their men. We was fighting together, and all of a sudden, what happened? Gloria Steinem Amen. took them Rockefeller dollars. The Rockefellers gave her money Amen. to start feminism, and then went and got the black woman and put, brought her into feminism, and y'all left the movement. When black women went into feminism, we lost the black struggle. Because y'all started fighting for females and not for the black family. Y'all ain't ready. Amen. Now, y'all ain't, y'all want no history on that, right? It ain't all the brothers now. Don't don't think it ain't all the brothers. Y'all 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 chose something, and see and, and see and see what they did when you joined their movement. They paid y'all through provision, which was called welfare. They paid y'all uh -huh. to go into that movement because if because if you ain't got no man, if you're gonna be against your man, we gonna have to supplement the fact you ain't got no man. So we gonna take care of your children for you, and that's what they did. And y'all went into that movement instead of saying, "Now we rather struggle with the brother," because he ain't never ran us anyway. I ain't never seen it. He ain't really never, ain't no black, black, black woman, ain't, he ain't never ran us. That's, but that's when our families fell apart. That's right. The whole black community imploded back then because back in the 50s and 60s, we had family. We had that's mothers right. and fathers and stuff. That's but right. that happened back then because, and, 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 and it killed, and, but that was, a, that was a counter movement to the black revolution. That's how they stopped us from, right. revo from, from revolution. They said, we got to get the woman because she's the center of the revolution. Just like right now, the women are the center now. Right now, the women can stop crime tomorrow. Women can stop crime tomorrow. Amen. The Amen. women can. But every time y'all saw, I told y'all, y'all see these boys getting killed, where they live at? They don't got no apartment. They don't live with no, who they live with? Amen. Who's holding the door? Where the guns at? In the mama house. Mm -hmm. Who's having sex with them? Amen. <laughs> if the women say, you know what, we're going to lock this down. Y'all want to kill each other? Well, we'll go out there. Y'all kill each other. Have sex with each other, too. We ain't having sex with y'all no more. <laughs> It'll stop all that. Amen. But if you're going to have thugs' babies, then they feel like, well, you, you, you like this. So, so the women still are the center of even rebuilding what we lost. I said, women, you the center. Amen. God told you in Genesis when he judged the serpent that the woman was the center of the whole thing. That's why he gave you a double covering because if Satan gets you, he knows the fate got the family. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Because he's going to turn you against the man. And once he turns you against the man, a man without his woman is going to fail. Amen. You can't make it without your woman. The favor of God is in your woman. Did you not know the Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing? Then, then he obtains favor. Before he found a wife, he ain't got no favor. He gets favor when he get a wife. You ain't got no favor by yourself. When you get a wife, you got favor. The favor's in the woman. And when a man does not, when a man does, that's why the Bible says if you don't treat your wife right, God won't hear your prayer. That's how powerful the woman, y'all yeah, ain't read it. But, but, but it works when she's in, when she's in submission when she's in cooperation with the man Amen. that's how it works but if it ain't that then it ain't gonna work right Amen. I know y'all I know Amen. look at verse 1 Genesis 3 I want to show y'all cuz I feel like listen listen y'all the Bible says that the woman is what 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 was what your function do you do you know what your that's not what well, that's that's that's, no, that's 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 not your function what is your what what what, what is your function help me Help me. Help. That's what you are. That if, if, if you got to understand, it's, it, listen, it's not a bad word. It's not just 
It's not like I'm talking about uh, like a, a hairdresser. Yeah. A help me is it's who you. That's your makeup. Yeah. It's in your DNA. Yeah. That's what you would do in any time you put a woman anything she will help. No matter what it is, if it's something wrong, she'll help. She'll help you sell dope. She'll help you do anything. She will help you. <laughs> she will help you. She will help you do good. She will, a woman will help you. If she ain't got no man, she, go, she will go on a job and help that company become successful because it's in her nature to help. That's what you do. That's who you are. You built to help. Everything about you is about helping. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Satan understood before he was trying to, he couldn't get Adam because Adam was all one. Remember the Bible says, what no, what no, nothing to get Adam with. That's why Satan didn't talk to Adam. If you know that Satan was there in the beginning, but he never said nothing to Adam because he couldn't, couldn't get Adam because Adam didn't operate like a woman. I know, come on, let your feminism come out. I, I feel it, I feel it stirring in you. You not like a man and a man is not like you. We different. Satan knew that. Satan knows it, but we don't know. But Satan knows we different. When he saw the woman, he understood how to get the man. That's what he, he I go out to her. That's why the Bible says, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Understand that she is the weaker vessel. Not less than you. Not less. Fragile. Fragile. Not less. Fragile. Satan understood how to get the woman. He knew, he knew how to get a hold to her. Y'all got what I'm saying? So what happened was, um, now, he knew to get Adam... I need to get his help. If I can get his help, I can get him. Because he needs her. Before she came, he was all one. He had, he didn't have, an, he, 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 there was nothing on earth that Satan could use to get him. He, the animals didn't meet his need. But once the meet, the need came, the, the one that can meet the need came, that's what he knew I can use to get at him. So now to get the man, I'm going to get at his help. So he got at his help. That's the reason why Adam chose. You got to realize why Adam got cursed. He chose the woman over God. And Satan knew that that woman is so powerful that I can destroy this man. He will choose. Did y'all hear what I said? The Bible says Adam and God, Adam and God were walking together in the garden every day. Adam, God would come down in his form, whatever form it was, and they was walking together in the garden. The creator of the universe and Adam walking together, just enjoying each other. That's why God was so upset because he's like, where, where my man at? Where my, I'm coming to conversate with my man. He's hiding. He's walking with God. Seeing God. And, and, not, and not just walking, they had to be conversating. Could you imagine the mysteries that I was telling this guy? Imagine what God is showing him. Universes and all kinds of galaxies. And I did this and this is how I did it. What questions would you ask? Right. How'd you do that, God? How'd you do that? I mean, just all the knowledge is right there. He got all of this at his, I mean, every, he's got everything at his fingertips. But this thing is more powerful than God. I'm trying to show y'all the power here. That's why God cursed him because he knew if I don't, if I, now listen, if I don't set this order right and put her under him, he'll never get back right. She's too powerful. So submission is not necessarily out of your weakness. It's almost as if, you know how you ever seen like a, a oil well and they dig up, they dig in a well well, and then all of a sudden they hit it, and the, and the, the oil spring out. Yeah. They have to hurry up and cap it off. Why? Wow, it's too powerful. That's what he had to do to the woman. <laughs> it's not that she's weak. She's not weak. She's powerful. She's so powerful, he had to put the cap on it. Because, because if he don't, if, if, if he don't, then she'll lead. Y'all, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And this is the reason why the, 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 the warfare has never changed. He's still doing the same thing. He got, he, he's got now women going for themselves. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. So what is your name? I'm LaShonda. Hi, LaShonda Lashonda. Thompson. All right, LaShonda. So, and where are you from? I'm from New York, but I'm a Dallas. I'm a resident out here in Dallas. Wow, okay. Yes. So how did you hear about Destin Ministries? Um, just through research. I was online and just ran into him on YouTube. And that message, who we are, yes, did it for me. Amen. And then I did the research and I said, wow, this is right here. It's Amen. right here in black and white. Amen. And I just was drawn to the ministry and came out to support. Amen. We're glad that you came out. So how did the conference affect you? Oh, the conference was off the chain. It was thought provoking. Amen. Thought provoking, just life changing, confirmational, yeah. you know, that's a word, but it was just, it was amazing, Amen. especially tonight. I, I was just jacked up. You can tell, just all in here. But <laughs> oh, it was really good. All right. Well, we thank you for coming tonight and just continue to uh, be blessed and just appreciate your time for coming. Thank you guys for coming. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your names and where are you from? Corey and Wendy Shaw. We're uh, originally from Arkansas, but okay. we live here in Texas. All right. Garland, right. Texas. So how did you hear about Destin Ministries? Well, our pastor, who is Pastor G. Craig Lewis, um, had done a teaching uh, regarding CERN. He was talking about teaching us about CERN in his message. And so we were was online doing more research about CERN. And so that's when we came across um, Pastor Darby. And so that was probably maybe two, three weeks. It was weeks. the second, November the 2nd, because I was okay. at jury duty. And uh, I was... Uh, looking at some other information about CERN and I saw his message CERN the end and I text my wife I listened to it and he was talking about the movie Transformers that really got me and I said text my, my wife I said babe check this out check this pastor out and, and it took off from there. Amen. So how from. has the conference been for you tonight? The conference has really been good. Um, uh, it's a strong word. It, it really challenges you and anytime you're getting challenged by the word of God to get better that's yes. really what it's about, especially on right. uh, Thursday night. I was really today thinking about what he was saying, the seeds and decisions you make, that harvest going to come forth, and we got to just bear it. Amen. Bear it out, and uh, it right. makes you stronger. And uh, With uh, me and my wife, we've been married, getting ready to be 19 years. And, and uh, like he said, it's a struggle, but it's a good struggle. Yeah, and right. um, covenant, the covenant we have with God and with each other is that's kept us together. And the word of God. Amen. And how has the conference affected you tonight? Well, hearing about the woman, what he taught on the power of the woman tonight, I've never heard it. Um, <laughs> it, I was just trying to take it in. I still got to chew on that, but it is revelating. It's just revelating knowledge. And I'm thankful for it, you know, because when we have understanding, then we walk in it. You know, we, we understand how to walk pleasing to God. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys for coming here. Well, we appreciate you for coming as well. Yes. And you all be blessed. Uh, we'll okay. be back when y'all come. All right, we'll yes. be back. And we'll be continue back. to listen to you online also. <laughs> Amen. Okay, okay. thank you. you. Okay. So what is your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Kelly Green, and I drove up from San Antonio, Texas. Great, great. Yeah. And how did you hear about Destin Ministries? Uh, I was actually doing some research on YouTube on a different topic, mm -hmm. and one of Pastor Steve's uh, videos was on that page and so I clicked on it I was very interested it put me over to his page and then amen. I continued to watch every video on there amen awesome amen. awesome word amen so how did tonight's conference in Dallas affect you it was a blessing um, very much uh, a revelation word amen and uh, really being led by the spirit he followed it and and just i think that's a word that every woman needs to hear especially amen. today in today's uh society with our young girls and our young women just the power of a woman awesome amen. word it awesome. was an awesome word it was but we do appreciate you coming thank and you. we'll be back so come back and see us again i definitely will okay thank you you're very welcome so what is your name and where are you from? My name is Charlize Gunn. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee originally. I moved here five years ago. And your name? My name is Paris Gunn. I'm from Memphis originally also, and I just moved here in August. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So how did you hear about Destin Ministries? Well, I'll answer that because um, I was actually on Facebook one day, and um, I came across a Facebook page. It was like a, a radio station or something, and um, my pastor is G, G. Greg Lewis, so they honored him and you know put a video on of him. So uh, 
obviously if he's my pastor, I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, so they respect my pastor. I'm gonna look, you know, and see, you know, who this other pastor is. Cause they, after that, they they posted Pastor Darby. And I'm like, I listened to him and I'm like, oh my God, he, he preaches almost verbatim the way he corrects does. So it's only like natural that I wouldn't mind listening to him, you know? So that's how I came to, and it's been like, I've been listening to him for like maybe two, two years now. Okay. So how did tonight's conference affect y'all? <laughs> I had to bag up all the way. Oh, man, because we were here yesterday, too. Oh, my God. Um, goodness gracious. I originally fell in love with it. Um, the, the, and I got to say this to answer that. Um, with a sermon, once my wife put me on it, because, you know, at first, initially, um, we was in the courting stages. And she told me about this preacher. And all I knew was G. Craig. I ain't I really trying to hear too much else. And I'm like, uh, mm-mm. <laughs> so when she finally got around to I finally got around to listening to it and I fell in love with the, with the ministry right off the bat because I, I you know when you get to a point where you've been places with God you know false when you hear it and you know truth when you hear it so when that was true but it it comes in a way how can I say this like it's like it's close to you it's almost like a family member preaching. Mm -hmm. You sound like my uncle. Okay. <laughs> to tell you the truth. I mean, it's the strength. Yeah. And I was like, ain't nobody doing this. I instantly fell in love. And I watched, listen, listening to him because he affirmed a lot of the same things that I was even telling other people and her about. But he would break it down to a way where it was, it was phenomenal. I mean... <laughs> I don't even know how to put it. There ain't no words to describe it. But what I can say is, is that if you listen to it, you're going to change. You ain't got no choice but to change. It's going to draw you and drive you. There ain't going to be no come and listen to this and then just sit down and keep coming back. No, you're going to either stay or you're going to leave. Because it's, it's, it's bare bone true. Yeah. How did how the conference affect you? Uh, um... <clears throat> he spoke on a couple of things that, you know, took me to a place where I had to deal with myself. You know what I mean? So that's what it does. Like, whenever I listen to G. Craig, whenever I listen to Darby, they force you to deal with your issues. Amen. So, you know, before, you know, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I grew up in, in Baptist. You know what I mean? So growing up in Baptist, you learn scripture, you learn, you learn just the word of God, but at the same time, you don't learn the application. And that's what the, that is what Darby does. He, he shows you how to apply the word to your life. And Amen. and so does G. Craig. This is Darby. <laughs> I can't Amen. even say nothing else. Like <laughs> that's all I can say. Well, Mr. Mrs. Gunn, we do appreciate you all coming out to the conference and just continue to listen to Pastor Darby and just be blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all come back. Thank you. <laughs> Please come back. What are your names and where are you from? Uh, Jason. I'm Mason. We from uh, Dallas, Texas. All right. And how did you hear about Destin Ministries? Well. At first, you know, we had been, um, you no, know, we go to different churches because we are part of ministry too. Mm -hmm. and, um, we get milk and cookies over here, um, some cereal, a little oatmeal over there. But then when we started listening to Pastor Darby on YouTube, it was like steak and potatoes and, and gravy and protein that we needed. Amen. And breaking down the word to where we could actually, it was practical to us so we can put it into, um, activate it. Yeah, Amen. activate it, yeah. And so how has the conference tonight impacted you? I really can't find words because if, if, if I would tell you how I really or how I really felt, it would limit the experience because I can't find words to express how I felt. Amen. I'm teaching because, te like Pastor Darby said, most people are used to being spoon-fed the truth instead of going to investigate the truth. But what Pastor Darby does, he gets to the meal, he gets it, he breaks it down, he cuts it, he eats it, he regurgitates it, give it to us. Amen. So we can understand. Amen. Well, I never um, heard marriage broke down like that, so it gave me something to uh, uh, look forward to, to working with. I mean, it just, uh, I ain't never, never, nobody ever like broke marriage down like that. I thought marriage was one way, and I found out it's a different way, so it's like, it was eye opening. Amen, so, amen. Well, we thank y'all for coming to the conference tonight and be here. blessed. You should have been here. Thank you. So, what are your names and where are you from? My name's Jay, and this is my wife, Laura.
Hi, Lori. So, Lori, how uh, did you hear about uh, Pastor Darby? Well, my husband uh, saw him on YouTube, and he kind of sent me sent me messages, and um, got stuck ever since. Amen. <laughs> and how has the conference impacted you tonight? Um, <laughs> Pastor Darby is is a really powerful preacher. You have to really take your time and, and really sit down and understand what he's trying to tell you because if you just skimming through it and you're not really going to hear all the message so you need to really get somewhere by yourself and sit down and really listen to what he's trying to tell you and how it blessed me tonight is uh it just made me stronger one of one of wanting to do the will of god wanting to to become a better man and, and motiv motivating me to become that that man. Amen. Amen. And how has the conference impacted you? The same way, just seeing my husband and the impact that it has on my husband, it's it's overwhelming and it's just blessed that we can take this back home to our family. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight and be blessed. Okay. Thank you.